Hughes, who is a priest in Mullahoran in County Cavan, but I believe the home patch would be Mount Temple in County Westmeath. Is that right, PJ? That's right, yeah, that's right, yeah. Good morning, and thank you for taking my call. Thank you, good morning to you and to, to your listeners as well. Tell us what position you're taking on these restrictions. Um, I, I have taken a position that I don't agree with uh, the restriction that's been placed on the practice of the faith of the people uh, in the country, uh, restricting them from attending mass. And, um, that's my t- and the reaction of your parishioners, have they come to church? Have they uh, adhered to the health advice and stayed at home? Yeah. Well, um, the, as, you, as you probably know, maybe you don't, but uh, every church in the country has has done all it can at putting in hand sanitizers, uh, spacing uh, the seats um, a two meter distance, uh, you know, to, and fighting the people to be careful. And if they don't feel well, don't come. So, but anyway, um, in my case, uh, people have continued to come since September, since the uh, thing was opened up a little bit, and this lockdown, the the people still came to mass, and I didn't stop them. I didn't close the doors. And, um, and just for background, in the first lockdown, yes. did you close the doors? Uh, I didn't close the doors, but nobody came because people were very aware. It was it was a it was a more stricter lockdown, I think, wasn't it? People thought that maybe three months of this it'll go away, and that was the kind of the the message from on high. There's a after three months, we would be able to move back in again, you know. But even if they had come in the first lockdown, your doors were still open? Well, my doors were still open, yeah. yeah. So, there's a principle behind that. What's the point of principle? Well, the principle is that God is the creator of heaven and earth. And uh, it's a divine law. We have a divine right to live our faith. And um, uh, who am I to... I, I'm ordained to preach the gospel. And uh, Jesus said, go out to the whole world, pretend the good news. And... Uh, teach the commandments and uh, baptize in the, the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And uh, Jesus died on the cross for love of us, and He had performed many miracles in the gospel stories, and He even raised people from the dead. So, who am I to say that uh, He can't help us now? That's your faith, and I respect your that's faith. faith. That's right. Yeah. That's but, the faith of the teaching of the church, actually. But the point I was going to make is, it does bring you into conflict with the public health. Advice. It brings me into contact with, uh, in conflict with uh, the government, who have um, put into place seemingly a law that um, can prosecute a priest who celebrates mass with people present. Just clarify that, because these are recommendations. These ultimately, they are. Uh, it is advice. It is something that. Um, as to whether it is law, have, is there a prosecution? Is there a Yes, there's a prosecution, yes. The Gardaí arrived here to prosecute me last Sunday. On what basis? That I was celebrating Mass with people present in the church. And did they quote the relevant law you had broken? They did, yes. They said that I broke the law. They said, I said I didn't know there was a law. I said, yes, there was a law passed in the, with the government, a uh, legislation passed whereby they had now the authority to prosecute any priest who did not accept uh, the law of the, uh, that the government had signed into law. How did you react? Well, initially I said, well, sure, look, if you have a file for the DPP, sure, go ahead and give it to the DPP. But, um, uh, I mean, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I said I, I didn't realize it was such a law, because I, I said, I don't think there's any law goes above divine law. And that's higher than any uh, world law. And I said, if, if they want to stop people practicing their faith, then we're talking about entering into a communist country. If people's faith is strong enough and they believe that Jesus can heal, then what is the government's problem? What I was trying to get out, and I made a dog's dinner of it, but there are emergency powers, and ultimately they have not been tested before the courts. And there are some prosecutions that succeeded and there are others that were abandoned. So are you prepared to go all the way before a judge if needs be? Well, um, I, I went as far as I possibly could and, um, last Sunday and uh, the, on, when, after speaking with the two ladies for half an hour, uh, the sergeant said to me, OK, um, this is, was your last chance and the next time you are caught, 
celebrating Mass with people present, you will be prosecuted and the file will be sent to the DCP. And you're happy to entertain that? Well, as I said, I, I am still celebrating Mass, but I, it's, there's, no, um, there's no time on the bulletin. People don't know what the schedule is, what Mass schedule is, so they, don't, they can't come when I'm celebrating Mass because they don't know what time the Mass is at. Uh -huh. From a public health point of view, if there was a crowd, if social distancing could not be maintained, if there was a risk, a real heightened risk that these people might transmit a virus between them, would you then reconsider your position? Um, well, I don't understand that question fully because um, the, the thing is that you're saying to me that if the church was jammed full with 500 people, is that what you're saying? Well, if the church was sufficiently full that the, the, these people were close together, less than two metres apart, would you then reconsider? Well, uh, first of all, um, I am not a guard and I'm not going to tell people to come in or go over the church and they have the right to go in, but the seats are marked off so they can't be close together. Every second seat is closed off so they won't be close together. And um, Okay, well that answers my question. Yeah. If they were so numerous, if there was a big crowd, let's say for a Christmas ceremony, would you then have a different view if they weren't able to stay within those markings? You see, look, I, I, I don't want to get into the trouble of the law, but I'm just saying, saying that, uh, that you know, we're, we're Christians, we believe that God is present in the Eucharist, and I've been told not to celebrate the Eucharist for people present, since they can't receive it, and I've been told not to baptize, not to celebrate the sacraments, so that goes against uh, what I'm supposed to be doing here, you know. Yes, but I'm trying to test ethically if you did see a large crowd during a pandemic. There can't be a large crowd in my church, I'm telling you, because every second seat is cordoned off, and people will not go into another seat uh, if there's people in it already. So that's the way it is, and uh, the, the church is set out that people can't be on top of each other. So I don't know what else they can do. I mean, if people can't get into the church, they can't get in. So I don't know why they would come, because most people know, they're educated and intelligent enough to know that I, it's not safe going in there. And anyway, whoever comes, they have their masks on as well. So, I mean, you go into any shop, which is a lot smaller than a church building, and you have a crowd in it, you know, who's regulating the crowd? And there's a greater chance of catching it in a shop setting than in a church. So, how many people would you get at a typical daily mass? And how would it compare well, I mean, to, how, how, about, how it compare uh, to before mass? Between eight, uh, eight and 25 people during the week. And how would that compare to before March, before these restrictions? Oh, should there be, there'd be maybe 30, 35, and maybe the weekend there'd be 250, 300, 400. But See. they're not coming now. Their numbers doesn't come because a lot of people realise that it's not safe to go. So your numbers are much reduced. Do you, after these people have left, do you sanitise where they've sat? Yeah, no, I have a fumigator. I bought a fumigator and I fumigate the church. And that's a daily ritual, is it? Every time there's Mass, I do that. After the Mass, I fumigate the church. So have you thought about your response when the Gordhi come back, if they come back? Well, if they come back, I mean, if they come back, they come back. But, I mean, I, I am not uh, organising a, a Mass where people can come in at the minute because, like, I've, as I say, I've gone to the, to the point of, uh, you know, as far as I can go. If I go, go and celebrate again... I'm on my own at this stage. There's no support coming from too many corners here. So do I want to hang myself out to dry or, or do, do I want to allow the, the, you know, the church to throw me under the bus or whatever? Or, or do I want to allow the state to make an example of me, to, to punish me and, as an example for every other priest? And I think you know, that's a bit ridiculous, you know? Have you been isolated among your colleagues? I won't say isolated, but uh, let me say that there's nobody ringing me up to see how I am or there's nobody saying, well done, you know? PJ, I appreciate you taking our call this morning. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's Father PJ Hughes. He's